Hello, welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video, we finish making the drill grinding jig and see if it works by grinding some drills. The tool and cutter grinder I'm using was made from a kit supplied by Hemingway Kits and I have a series of videos showing how to make it on my channel Enox Engineering. I've put some details at the end of the video for both. So let's go into the workshop and see how we finish it. I used the paper strip method to mark the index ring and the feed screw. Some of the updates I've made since the last video. I've put some thread lock on the inside of this dial so that the cap head can turn without the dial staying still. I've put these two little pegs in, they're just tapped into holes so you've got something to turn when you're indexing. You turn the spindle when indexing. Because this block is set back a bit further, there is a cutout on the back in the plate to accommodate the block. Here's the part I milled out so that the feed screw block sit there. And this here is the locking screw from the original cutter grinder. Just undo that, you can swivel the base to the angle you need. I'll show you how this works. When you put a feed on it, you look at this part here, I've just locked the spindle just nipped it, it doesn't need to be tight, if you tighten it, it, it locks the spindle. So just nip it to stop it indexing. And as you tighten the feed screw in, the indexing pin slides along this cutout in the block to give you your feed. So you've got 5mm of feed on that, which should be ample for most drills. On the end of the feed screw, I have marked 10 divisions on this face. Here's my zero mark. Each division is 0.1 of a millimetre. And on the end of the indexing ring, I've marked 12 positions for the 12 holes. Now, the thing I've found is that as the table's tilted, it's difficult to see the marks. So what I've done is just put a red mark there, which represents the first hole, and then a red mark on the one that opposite or you could use the two pins which I did use so as long as that pin is parallel with that one then when you turn it 180 degrees you get the next pin in line uh, but I found on the feed it's easier just to put a red spot on the top and then when you change the other side back this off see two turns under your index pin Rotate 180 degrees, engage your index pin. Okay, we'll try grinding the drill. First of all, I'm going to grind, set the angle to 12 degrees. For the table. This is the drill I wanted to grind. It's been ground before. It's an old drill. Morse taper, number one. Select a collet that the drill fits. And feed this through the bottom. Through the collet. Let me explain what I'm doing when I set the drill up. Use this big drill to show. I'm setting this cutting edge parallel to the table. So I'm imaginarily drawing a line through the middle of the drill and spacing the two cutting edge equally parallel to that table. And what I found if I put my rule across it, it's virtually on center there. So that gives me a center line and I can turn the drill to the right position for grinding. I also use the, the rule on the top just to give me that width so I can get the drill above the collet by about 25 millimeters. Then just nip the collet, hold the table back down. The feed screw is backed right out and at the moment 
the, uh, the drill is too far in, it's, this is where we're cutting here. So all I need to do is move the table back on the side, the bottom here. Each side you've got some screws you can undo. And you can move the table in and out closer to the wheel and lock the screws up each side. This one here is for the angle of the table. And here's another tip. Under the table here, just under the wheel, I've got the lid off an ice cream carton. I've put some oil in there and this catches most of the grit that comes off the wheel and the bits. You can see it stays in there. The area around it is relatively clean. The drill jig is set at 31 degrees which gives you 59 degrees from the parallel position. You can set it on either side. It just means that if you set it on the other side you'll be cutting on this side of the wheel. Um, you don't need to change that angle because you're going to rotate the drill in the spindle. The drill is just in front of the wheel, not the table. I'll just put some red felt tip pen on the end of this drill. The next thing we do is turn the motor on. So we want the wheel to go down because I'm cutting so it pulls down on the table. The lock's off. Turn this screw till the wheel touches. That's the feed. Move the table backwards and forwards. Turn it a bit more. I don't know whether you can see there the cutting edge. Notice that it's a, a broken drill. You see, there's a chip out of the face here, so this face is a bit jagged. But if I uh, undo the index, you can see there this face it's cleaned up to the edge and back, and there's a little bit left of the whoever ground it before took the heel off it. Same on this side, you can see where the heel's been taken off. That's how I'd usually grind it for just a single cut. So if I make it a four cut, colour this in so we can see what's been ground off. Just the angle to 20 degrees. Just cutting on the back here. I'll leave it at that. I've thinned out the the edge there. This is the cutting edge at the front, which is broken away, but I've thinned it out. Now I'll rotate it round. Mark the feed wheel just there. Back off the feed wheel. One, two, that's stopped there. Slacken the indexing pin and rotate 180 degrees. Tighten the pin. So I've got two turns on the feed wheel to go back in. Take that out, we'll have a look. You can see there the red part is the, the cutting edge, 
as I say this has been damaged on there if you look at that side this is the cutting edge and this has been backed off okay this is the drill I'll try and sharpen up you can see it's been I think that's been sharpened by hand I've selected a collet that goes down there tighten up the top I'm just setting the, the drill height about the width of a rule and I just want to line up the drill cutting edge so that they're parallel this is quite a wide land on this one always use the spanner when you're locking it because if the spindle turns you could shear your pin off the indexing put some red felt tip on so we can see what's happening first of all back out the feed move the table in lock the table up and this time it's set at 20 degrees for the angle feeding in you can see it's taking it off the back yeah leaving the front there Let's take the other red off. Got them up with the cutties. Take the cut off. Take the indexing pin out. We'll rotate it round to the next one. Indexing pin back in. see on that one I've just taken it up just before the the land has cleared so now I'll just change the angle of the table to 12 degrees take the feed off come up to the wheel lock the table feed in till it touches you can see two cutting edges it's quite thick this is but it's only what's reducing on the chisel point I should say with a little addition to this I can use this in the tool post so I can put stock in the collet, machine, square, triangle, hexagon, whatever you need to machine on the end or drill a hole through centre of a bar. Also you can use this in your drilling machine, fits in the vise, there's a little indexing fixture. Well that's it for today. If you'd like any more information about the tool and cutter grinder, this is a website. It's a, it was in a kit form from Hemingway Kits. And if you'd like to see how it's made, visit my video on making a tool and cutter grinder. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope the information was useful. And I'll see you next time on Enots Engineering. <laughs>